Hello and a good evening tonight. Uh, this is Michael Obasha and it's Sunday at six o'clock, which only means let's chat. And tonight, <laughs> um, as I wait for people to join in, tonight we have Bonnie Gillespie, uh, who is actually a cage fighter with a difference. She's fiery, redhead muscle upon muscles, charming, she's loud, a big smile. Oh, here she is, she's waving at us. Oh, I'm gonna let her in. And she is a, um, okay, let's get her in. Okay. In Go live with Bunny. <laughs> How are you? <laughs> See you, gorgeous girl. Mm. Look at that. I need to get in there. Look at that, baby. Can you hear me fine? Yes, I can hear you loud and clear. Well, I'm just going to re redo my intro. Tonight, mm -hmm. which is Sunday nights at six o'clock, is Bonnie Gillespie right in the in the camera there. She's a cage fighter with a difference. <laughs> She's a very red head, muscle upon muscles. She's charming, loud, with a big smile. Oh, oh, firecracker. <laughs> there you go. I just saw that online somewhere and I had to use it as an interview. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you, everyone. Mm. Thank you, Michael, for having me on. Ah, oh, absolute honor. Look, just so for our viewers, I was lucky enough to meet you recently on retreat, the film set. Yeah. That was fun. That was an experience. That was so cool. <laughs> And what goes, through, what goes on in your mind when I mentioned Retreat, the feature film, that you play an amazing role in? Yeah, Retreat, oh. It's going to be, um, it's going to be interesting. It'll be full of violence, which is awesome, right up my alley. But, yeah, no, I'm looking forward to it once finished. It'd be, I never really went up to the camera to check what I look like on, you know, on screen, but I'm, I, I leave it in uh, George's hands, and yeah, all is good. I just get on there, do the job, but it's gonna, it's. I think it's gonna be amazing. It'd be good. I think because we don't have um, a retreat film like that in Australia, so yeah, looking forward, looking forward. Well, you look amazing on screen because I've worked on the film. And George Batcher is my brother, who's a hero, hero uh, film stars in it, and has cast you. I mean, you know, mm -hmm. once this film comes out, I'm going to say it now, you're going to go to places as in you're going to be the new Tomb Raider. Belinda, what's her name? <laughs> um, That'll be cool. Belinda Jolene, who? I'm just going to say you're going, you're going places, honey. And I want Thank to know you. one thing. Can you keep my brother's ass in this film? Uh, I don't know. We have to wait. We have to wait and see, Dad. You have to wait and see. It's a good fight. Okay. Cool. That's a good fun. Well, I was, as I said, honoured to meet you at, at the um, film. Now, I want to find out a little bit about you and let our audience find out a little bit about you because you're so empowering. Where did you grow up? Gosh, I, I grew up in New Zealand, a small town north of Wellington, a little place called Levin, so the Manawatu region. Um, so it was, it has grown, guys, relax. It's up to 20,000 people there, so we're... Ooh, we're getting there. <laughs> but, yeah, it was a great, great little town. Um, had everything you needed, really, for small town things. You could park outside the bank, which you can't do here in Sydney much. But, yeah, it was cool. It was it was street life, um, home. Once the lights come on, you're, you're at home. But, basically, you're, you're out on the street having fun as a kid. But, yeah, not like today. <laughs> I don't know it's changed at the moment, unfortunately. Yeah. But you grew up with five with some brothers, didn't you? How was, how was that like growing up? Were you, were you a tomboy? Uh-huh. Okay, so I had luscious, curly, long hair. Like, it's just growing back now. Like, it's taken, what, 10 years to grow back? So my mother, she dropped us off at our um, family hairdresser and she went to go shopping at Woolworths and then came back. And we all, like, I, I sat in the chair and said, look, I'm allowed to look like my brothers. 
And she's like, Victoria's like, are you sure? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, I want it. You know, I, I can't, I don't know how to deal with all this here, but yeah, I'm allowed to be like one of the boys. So she then begun to um, shave my hair and she gave me a number two. And then mother came back and she was in shock because it was a day, was it? Yeah, a day before passport photos. So yeah, it was looking pretty rash. <laughs> yeah. It was pretty rash. But yeah, I was definitely into me um, commando pants, me old wall paint, jumping off my roof onto the trampolines, setting up traps, whatever I could find, weapons to hurt my brothers with. I'm on it. <laughs> A little carry <pyrrhic> here. <laughs> but I just found out you were actually born in Australia, even though you're mm -hmm. raised. Where were you? Yes. Yeah, so I'm an '87 baby. I don't quite make it. I think it's '86 babies there. Um, birth certificate of Australia. So my mum, we were too young, so I had to go on my mother's passport. Then I uh, become a New Zealand citizen. So I'm pretty spewing because I want to be an Australian citizen. But you won't take long. I mean, you've got some guns there. Can, can we just show our audience some guns? Babe? No, they're somewhere. I put it on COVID way. Oh, wow. Oh. There, abs <laughs> and beauty on top of that, gorgeous. You know, what I mean, like, I mean, you must work so hard to maintain that body, but you know, with nutrition, and, nutrition you know. is yeah, the key. It's your base, it's like the um fuel you put in your car, you know, you got to put you got to put the good shit in there and for it to run nicely and for a lot to for it to last long, so. Yeah, but you gotta you gotta mix it up a bit. You gotta get snacky at times. You gotta get that snack. You gotta, you gotta mix it. You gotta body shock your. You know you can't be a Nazi about it. <laughs> <laughs> and then also you growing up as a, yes. as a teenager, were you bullied at school? Um, that's an under now. Yeah, that understatement. Now I was bullied like crazy, um, but. Mostly from boys, not really from the girls. I was so like tomboyish. I think I was a bit. I think they were a bit scared. But um, yeah, no. So the boys cop some shit. So my mother taught me right. She's like, respect others, respect everyone that respects you, and you know, um, don't bully anyone. You know, it's it's very hard to take on when you're being bullied daily. So, you, and then I, because so my parents split, right? So I would call my father and be like, what do I do? And they're like, my dad's like, knock him out. And I'm like, yeah, knock him out. And I was, that sound in my heart, you know what I mean? So I, I prolonged it and I'm like, you know, I can't take it anymore. So I started a bit, but I started getting into fights and shit. So that wasn't of me though, but always respected my teachers no matter what. But yeah, I was the, ret in the end I was a retaliator, which was, which was wrong, but. Oh, well. Shit happened. <laughs> it was good fun. <laughs> what were you bullied? What was the reason behind the bullying? Ah, uh, due to having a deficiency, so a disability. Kids, they're cruel. It's it's there. They can see it. It stands out. Whatever. But yeah, you get put on the handicap heaps. <laughs> it happens. Were you, were you born with, with that? Disability? Were you born with that? Yeah, born. I actually have nicknames for them too. So this one's Nips. I stuck it in a baby's. Um, so my sister's, my nephew, when he was crying as a baby, I stuck it in his mouth to shut it up because so, I didn't know what to do. So I started sucking on it, realized there was no milk coming out, and then boom. Um, this one here is Elf. I don't you remember the um, cartoon Elf, his nose? Oh, yes, I do. I do. And this one's Bubbles. This one's Bubbles because it deflated after a, roll, a roller hockey accident. Um, I, I got wiped out on, on the court and, um, yeah, all the fluid disappeared. And I went to the do I went to the doctors and like, do you know what's wrong with you? He goes, well, I didn't know what it looked like in the first place. So, yeah, happy days. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I called it Bubbles because it came back. And this one's Caterpillar because it double-jointed. Oh, Kelly. <laughs> well, nicknames for my mother. So and you know what, Bubbles, I, I was called Bubbles once, so. I, I, <laughs> Get it. That's cute. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I've um, got, got some questions here for you. Um, as an artist kid, what was it like then compared to 
what things are like now today for you? As a child, oh, God, there's so much. Like, the thing is that these kids, or the kids in this generation don't know. That's all they know. This is all they know, you know what I mean? So I can't blame them for retaliating if you, you know, question them or you have a different outlook on life or you shouldn't, you know, live in the 90s and 80s and what we went through with Nokia 3310 and snakes and ladders, you know. We, we, went, we didn't see any of that because social media, obviously, 10 years. Um, obviously, it's, it's crazy. It skyrocketed to what, you know, what you see on social media now. So, God, oh, kids are exposed to so much. Yeah. And it's like, for us, it's like, whoa, that's, I've never seen that. Uh, you know, at that age, we're out on the, we're out of the street. We're playing uh, road, road rugby, cricket, uh, down at the, you know, lakes and catching eels or whatever, you know what I mean? But, um, yeah, this generation's definitely uh, uh, good luck. <laughs> I don't know. It's, it's crazy. crazy. It's crazy. crazy. Yeah. yeah. When you were growing up, did you have many friends? No, it was more so. I had, you know what? I had a Barbie doll and I shaved its hair off to look like me and cut its fingers off to look like me. And that was my bestie. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> no, I had a few, had a few friends, mainly boys, mainly guys. Um, it was good fun because, like, you know, we'd, we're very adventurous, set up traps, you know, cause a ruckus. Trick or treat when it's not trick or treat. Get money when you, you know. <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> There'll be days when it's not trick or treat days and we rock up to houses and score shit. <laughs> but that's what <laughs> fed us, right? That's what fed us. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, has, has your hand played a big part in, in your life growing up, positive and negative? Um, yeah, you know what? Um, positively... Um, or negatively, I, I should say negative. Well, you know what? Yeah, it has been because the negative side of it is the bullying, but it's mentally how you come out of it and surround yourself with positive people that are going to drive you out of that negative hole in the end. So negatively, it was the bullying side of things and some of the sporting, like uh, some of the sports that I in that I was in, wars would come up. Like you can no longer, you know, proceed with this. So you have to like... That's why I was a sports hopper. I was just like, yeah, I'll just jump onto this one, next one, next one, next one. But um, positive is just like um, in inspiring others who are in the same boat with, you know, with disabilities. And it's just really cool getting messages like, oh, my daughter, you know, she wants to train and lift weights. What do you use, you know, to keep your spine in, the, in line? Because with cycling, uh, having a shorter arm, my spine was starting to curve, so they had to readjust everything and get it all modified. So me passing on information to people with the same boat, it's just they, they get it. They love it. They're so appreciative, you know what I mean? So it's down, like, to lifting hooks, to you just, just forwarding on that information, preparing that child for younger to teens to adults. So. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah, very empowering, very empowering indeed. Yeah. Because that's what they need someone like yourself to look up to. Yeah. Like, We've done it, we can do it. So, kudos to you, sweetheart. It's such an inspiration. And just, yeah. growing up, did you ever get suicidal thoughts by any chance? Yeah, like um, you just get fed up of going to school. Like, what am I pulling up? Go through the front door, get picked on. So, you just come, you come home and you're like, Mum, what am, why am I going to school for? And then you just sit in the room. You just don't want to come out. You just like, no, nah, I'll just stay here. I'll stay put. Yeah. But there is a little, there's the other side, which is the, you got the devil and the angel. So the angel on my side was a lot stronger. Having the Lord, I think, growing up, having having the Christian background and, you know, having supportive parents was good. Yeah, it was good. Amazing, and um, I'm glad that you're still with us <laughs> because we're, we're probably yeah. Yeah, very dangerous. Yeah. So, um, look, your biggest sporting achievement, you've done so much over the years. Can you share that with our viewers? Yeah. Um, okay, so uh, cycling for 10 years in New Zealand. I got to represent. Um, so I was fourth in New Zealand able body riding and then um, was kind of, led more across to Paralympics 
I didn't really want to go to Paralympics because I, as an able-bodied rider, I was doing well. So, but then I thought, well, if I'm going to get protested against, um, yeah, maybe that's my option to veer off to Paralympics. So I went to Holland and then um, did what I did. And my actual teammate, she held the world record at the time. She was from another part. I think it's Rotorua. So we stayed under the same roof. She has a similar hand to me, but no thumb. And um, I think watching everything that I could do, it, <laughs> it hurt her, but I didn't understand that. I was 16. I was just going about my day, blah, blah, blah. Come um, race day, I then, um, no, come, at, like it was a couple of days before race day, right? They had the officials overlook all the riders. I was then, I was on my bike. I got off my seat. And they just was like, this chick's getting off her seat. She's got a form of grip. Uh -oh. So then um, what happened is they pulled me aside and said, look, all these other athletes are not. They haven't got a form of grip. So I was like, oh, God. <laughs> and you know what I mean? So then I was like, I'm, I've come all this way from New Zealand to Holland to race and compete for my country to, you know, be confronted with this. So then they then go, oh, look, we've got an idea. We'll sew the fun part to the to the glove to disable me more, which didn't happen anyway because I had a known technique down, which was obviously push-pull technique, and I'd drop my shoulder to curl around the bar as, I was, as, as I'd get off my seat. So, yeah, it didn't phase me. It took a second off my time, but still won the gold medal. I was quite embarrassed. So I was quite embarrassed, actually, to um, get up on the podium because my teammate made – a massive hoo-ha about it and was crying. So I said, you know, that's that, you know what, what was done was done there, moving forward, whatever. Throw something else at me, you know what I mean? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I took a break from it. I was like, oh, fuck it. Well, congratulations to getting that part. That's awesome, darling. Yeah. Amazing. You should be proud of yourself. I'm proud of you. Thank you. <laughs> um, uh, now, not many people know you're not just beautiful and a and a fighter. We'll get to the fighting in a minute, but you yeah. can also sing. You've you've been out on the road as an as an artist. Can you tell me what have been some of your mo memorable moments? Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. So the band when I first got here, yeah, with yeah. my my um <laughs> XX whatever, like the first love when I first um come to this country he was a muso and then we linked up with a uh what is it premier entertainment it was like a 70s band it was pretty fun with um alan mcdonald and renee it was it was definitely some years of on the road and just funny moments free feeds drinks <laughs> drunk nights all that stuff but um yeah no i I was inspired by them as well and like they would be like, Oh, you wanna sing or you know, get up on stage, start doing one song here, two song here, whatever, you know, just to get that build that confidence. And um I remember the biggest gig we did with our king it was the convention center, like to three thousand people, which was pretty outrageous. You don't really see much, you just keep looking beyond. You're like, Oh god, don't fuck it up, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, though no, the music, the the travelling, the things that you see, it's not like it's nighttime travelling really, it's just to try and stay alive and get home in one piece. But, yeah, I was a driver for the band most of the time and then I'd get up and do some uh, singing. Uh, the craziest story from that would be when we were coming from um, Tweed Heads, so we were heading back to Sydney and we stopped at the Twin Servos. We're in this massive, like, obviously, band van, right? Sorry to, to the people that, you know, if you're embarrassed by this, whatever. So we're at Twin Servos, and, uh, like, before that, they started getting on it, right? They were drinking the leftovers from the Tweet Heads. So you'd never get on the piss with Kiwis. That's all I'm saying. It's a guy from Albuquerque. He's like, yeah, I can drink you guys under the table. <laughs> that was a shit Albuquerque voice, but anyway. And he's like, and then he was like, oh, you yeah, shit, baby, then let's fucking go, you know? And uh, they got their, like, layout set up. We ended up, like, pulling over for a friend that runs a company for something, and then alcohol fell off some truck, and then they gave us more, which was not good. Next minute, I see 
one of the band members like stumble out so drunk whatever gets back in we get to the twin servos i get out of the van we all get out of the van because we went to mcdonald's i go to the servo pick up some cigarettes come back and check up on the albuquerquean and he's like so wasted i go i go back inside look down in between my toes and there was human feces in between my feces my feeties it was fucking bad i then wasn't shocked that knowing i had someone's turd in my toe <laughs> so i then ran back to the van and was like what's happened so there was a guy watching from across he goes i thought he was like down syndrome the, the one of our guys he got up his tea towels, right? He had vomited. He had he turned around, shat outside, vomited inside, got the tea towel, wiped everything. It was just a mess, right? We were there till three a.m. cleaning cleaning up human feces everywhere oh, through the bags. It was shocking. So that was my most, most memorable moment. <laughs> the music industry. <laughs> it was crazy, man. Sorry to the story. Story, I love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. <laughs> you're you're on the ship between your toes. <laughs> you're cheap, mate. <laughs> okay, have you have you collaborated with any Aussie artists? Oh yeah, I got a mad opportunity to um, collaborate with Forte at Large, which is um, the song is on YouTube. YouTube, YouTube. Uh, yeah, thankful. And then the other song is with Cursor called Long Road. So that was pretty cool. It was good fun. I hope to do more down the track one day. It's always good I think, fun. I think you should continue the music part because you've got a very unique voice. I'll, I'll keep practicing. I'll keep trying. <laughs> You're all amazing. <laughs> you've got, you know what, you've got a beautiful face. Not many people have got the pleasure to meet you like I have. And you're, babe, from a gay perspective, sexy as. You are just hot trot with just a <laughs> personality, your smile, just your energy is just amazing. I wanted to. Oh, let you know how beautiful you are. In and out. Thank you. And it was a blessing missing, uh, meeting you too, baby. Thank oh, you. No, you're gorgeous. Uh, it, it was love at first sight. And I, I, I can't oh, oh. big things to happen to you. Look, <laughs> you've trained, what was it like training with 14 different personalities, right? All women themed. What was that like? I know you, oh, you know what? I. It was actually a blessing, you know. Like, um, I thought it would be crazy. It probably is crazy in some places, but New South Wales Surge were pretty cool. I mean, everyone was fighting for a position, but everyone was pretty humble, which was a blessing, you know, to um, be involved with. So, um, yeah, probably who knows if they were back chatty or if they were bitchy. I don't really get into that stuff. I like to stay focused. I, I'm a... I see good in too many people. I don't like to get involved, you know. So I just kept away from the drama because, yeah, I don't even know if it was drama, but, yeah. Uh, look, I've got Ruby Road. Ruby Road's management. Big shout out to them, these guys, um, as well as Catch Your Music. They've asked a question. Who would you like to collaborate with? Let's, who, who Is it Ruby you... Rose? Did you who, – who was it that – who um... – Kind of like Ruby Rose management. Oh man, you know, um, I really like the oh, correct. these are big names though, but it, it's far fetched. Even if they're Australian artists, like we could create a dance hit with a bit of drill, a bit of a female vocal with a bit of drilling, which is the drilling scene's quite you know, quite big at the moment, but um, I know that. You know, one for sticking to what they know. You know, they're boys, they're all... But then there's Young and Lips who is doing really well. You've got Hooligan Heps is the dance side of things, which she's great as well. God, there's so many... You know what? Chillin' It, if you know who Chillin' It is, is good as well. Chillin' It. But, yeah. Sia. Ah, imagine that. She's right. Yeah, she's an amazing writer, amazing artist. And many people don't know Sia is an Australian artist who writes big hits over in America for all these other artists. The yeah, and, you know, no, she's incredible. Absolutely. So yeah, so um, 
I can't now, give you a different answer, sorry, because there's too many what good about artists. Me? What about yeah. me? I can't so, what about me? It is a <laughs> <laughs> um, I, wish, I wish I could sing, but I reckon you should stick with that. Now, um, martial artist, when did you start martial arts? Started. <laughs> started, at, <laughs> started at 24. I um, found, so I was doing like a bit of weight training, which I love, at Riley's Gym Seven Hills. And then I found FCC, which was um, Harvest. We were running Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. That was awesome. I wasn't really consistent, but I really enjoyed it. The gymnastic side, just like, just it's crazy, like um, controlling the breathing, like movement, feel, feeling movement, uh, just different positional things that chokes, choking out people. Yeah, mm -hmm. choke them out. No. <laughs> that, well, like, just, yeah, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu I started off with. It was good. And then I moved from – I didn't really spend time grading there because I then found Laundry Football League. I was still keeping Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu on the side a little bit for tumbling and, you know, break falls. It's all what you need because in football, if someone tackles you and you know how to correctly roll out or, you know, land it, you, you have less uh, – less, um, what do you call it? What's the word, man, where you don't get injured very much? You know, you, you don't really want to fall into an injury. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to set yourself up for a time. <laughs> but, no, yeah, so Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu started off with, and then I moved to Noit, uh, Karate, Zendu Kai, which was at Fight Right, Black Town, and then was also doing Muay Thai on the side. Because I can't just do one. I have to do, like, two or three. You can find the side No. <laughs> no, I just like that. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, no, I was doing Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, Jiu -Jitsu, Muay Thai and Karate, and then thought, you know what, I want to do a fight. So then I left Karate. I got to Brown Belt. I should have done Black Belt because it would have been, like, so much cooler. But, um, yeah, left Karate and then went to um, wrestling with Stefan, who's – Commonwealth, yeah, he's Commonwealth uh, coach for Olymp uh, Wrestling Olympics. So went there and did it for six months and then thought, oh, or Mardi Gras? Who's that Mardi Gras? Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Yeah, but there's a question asking if you'd write a song for the Sydney World Pride in 2023 or even Mardi Gras for 2022. A go. dancer? Like a, yeah? A man, yeah, like a dancer. That'd be mad. An answer. An answer. Yeah, that'd be excellent. That'd be so. Oh, you know, I used to work at um, Ivy for Puff Doof. Oh, it went, it's, it went off like crazy. They loved the girl bonds there. I was like, get it, <laughs> I loved it. It was so much fun. I met some amazing people, amazing dancers. There was n never drama, never drama whatsoever. Never drama. Just drops, <laughs> if you know what I mean. No. <laughs> I can, I can see you by being adored by the LGBTQR community, especially the, 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 the girls out there as well, and me, myself. Um, That's um, cool. So you're absolutely awesome. Amazing. Are and you, and you, are you thinking about being on screen? Uh, she's coming on screen very soon <laughs> with Retreat, I suppose. Retreat. Yeah, it's a feature film. And you were on another... TV show, weren't you, recently? Uh, how's that? I think so. Not yet. <laughs> Fat Pizza. I think it's going to be out. Like, oh, I didn't give me the date or anything. So they're doing, like, a Fat Pizza Hauser two-week bender <laughs> at the moment. So yeah. the new one comes out in two weeks' time. Um, what else? What else? Yeah, Retreat. Well. Oh, that'll be excellent. I reckon they need someone in there with half a hand for sure. <laughs> Cut it off. Let's talk, about, yeah. let's talk about, I don't want to run out of time, but let's talk about your cage fighting. So you were talking about the karate and doing all these amazing, you've learned, or karate, my pie and so forth. Now, mm -hmm. what's the feeling? You're a cage fighter. So what's the feeling when you go into this cage and fight? What's the feeling that goes into your stream? Well, you know what, like the... From the start, like the start of the song, the walk, 
like it's like you don't see anything you're so zoned out it's an amazing feeling like it's all muffled out all you hear is the song and you're just psyching yourself up and then once you hit the cage it's just animal release the beast release yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's full on man like i don't know everyone gets different feeling buzz but it's incredible. It's like a, it's like a mad drug. I don't know. I don't even try drugs before, but yeah. <laughs> no, but it's a, an amazing feeling. It's sometimes hard to you, explain. Most many people they sit back and they they are the fighter, but get in there, have a go. You know, mm-hmm. got all these little keyboard warriors, but get in there, have a go. Yeah, I love it. Incredible feeling. Yeah, that feeling when you go in, having all your your amazing history and being, you know, picked on or bullied, you know, back at school. Do those feelings come back to you at all or in that in the You know what? I use, I, I actually, use, I brew off that. I brew off all the negativity that I've been, you know, everything that's been chucked at me as a child, like a kid, child. Um, but I use everything. I use all of it. Whatever I'm going through in the lead up to the fight, I use that. It's just so powerful. What you can just take all these things and just bottle it up and be like, Catchy music is also part of Marco Basher as well. The vast female martial arts actor. Mm. You yeah. have. Um, yeah, and then Ruby's like, oh, back off, yeah. she's like, oh, they're fighting over you, baby, which is awesome. Um, you see yourself as a female actor, like a martial artist sort of star. Like there's not many out there, you know, as a female no. actor. Just more so um, stunt, your stunties, eh? Yeah. Your martial arts movies, I don't know, extras. Oh, yours, Ruby. Ruby, Ruby. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So mine, man. <laughs> this is fun. Now, have you have you ever lost a fight? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. You know why? Because it, it, the bonds, <laughs> I think, I mean, having a different, um, it wasn't a so-called different camp, but in myself it felt different and um it was hard like it was through it was a COVID time like it was just like Jim's spirit was low my spirit at the time was low if you're low if you're at a low that and your fight camp's not going to go so well or inner you're in a peace you gotta you gotta be at peace when when through your fight camp in a way and be at peace at, when it's fight night you know what I mean but yeah, it was definitely the last fight was yeah. Let's just say well my heart wasn't in it as much. So when it came to the fight, um there was a there was a time in the cage where my mind went blank and like all my knowledge was just like frozen. It was so weird. Weirdest feeling that I'll never want to happen ever again because your mind's telling you to um shoot, which is for a takedown, but nothing's moving. It's like a body. It's your it's your body shock. It's a body shock, and I never want to see it again. <laughs> <laughs> I love no, but I I will fight again. Hopefully, yeah, it'd be good. I want to fight again, but at the moment, I'll just stick to um, yeah, keeping fit, eating healthy, trying to keep youth. You know, but yeah, thirty three, getting old. <laughs> nah. As long as you look after yourself and stay happy at the heart. Mm, absolutely. And how, how did you cope with that loss when you, when oh, you did that? The loss? Um, you know what? It's because, okay, yeah, 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 you lose, you lose, whatever, right? But because I've done so many sports, I've already trained myself. Like, you know what? You like In cycling, I had to wait one year for nationals. So it's like you take a loss, you like, you've got a whole year to train and work hard fighting there's fights always happening you know what i mean there's always this but for a while there they couldn't find me an opponent opponent but um there's always fights on so in my head i'm like yeah next one and it's all learning anyway so i learned from the loss like get your head straight get your get your p 
peace right, you know, and don't worry so much about other things that are going on. Focus on the fucking job, girl. <laughs> Focus in on the, yeah. Get the job done, son. And listen to your corner. Listen to your corner. Listen to your coach. And who do you, who inspires you? Like, uh, Overall, who inspires you? You know what? I don't have an idol. I don't have an idol. I have, obviously, Faith, man upstairs. And then I have, you know what? All my brothers. All my brothers. And my partner, he's very inspirational. He's so a man of knowledge, a man of skill, a man of all round everything. He's got, he's just, even raps and sings. He's he's my coach as well, and yeah, he definitely looks after me. But my brothers have been, played a big role, played a big role. Well, it, it is recorded, Ruby Rose Management, and then hi, Gianna. Gianna was a big brother. <laughs> I love you. It Gianna. is recorded. Um, yeah. I can send send through the links to you if you want, and they are on YouTube. So the first fight is Bonnie versus Inna, and the other fight is on Facebook, which is Shanique Grayley. She's a um. Next Australia, an ex Australian top model. She's beautiful too. She's lovely. And have you modelled? I mean, you're you're just gorgeous. Have you modelled? I mean, I'm sure you're. If there's a category. <laughs> Is there a midget category, my dear? Is there a midget category? Is there? Is there a five foot two freaking runway? Eh? <laughs> Might be. Um, Hey, my brother's jumped on, Marky. Do you have six? Yeah, the bro. Marcus. Okay, there you go. Uh, hi, Marcus. Nice to meet you, mate. You've got an amazing sister who's an amazing actor. <laughs> He's amazing. Yeah. An inspiration. He I'm actually, you know what? He actually videoed my first fight, and that video went viral. Oh, really? There you go. Don't read, the, don't read the comments because most of them are all negative. Like, oh, my God, she's such a boy muncher. I'm like, oh, my God, is it a man? But <laughs> eat a dick. Eat a dick. Sorry. <laughs> How do you cope with criticism on social media? Well, like, obviously, being, having the first fights and everything, I didn't even know it was going to kick off, like, you know, or get that, that many comments and shares. Wasn't ready for it, but my partner's like, whatever you do, don't read the comments because shit, they're hurtful. But it's all right. Don't read the comments. Yeah. It is what it is. It's an achievement to get in the cage. Mm -hmm. but, mm -hmm. I mean, you empower a lot of women out there. I mean, how the, that must feel amazing. You know, you empowering yeah. women. It is a good. You know what? Even the, even men, they even jump. They like slide in, and they're like, "Hey, I need to lose weight. I need help. You know, how do you do it?" Blah blah blah. So even not only women, but men are also sliding in, and you know, dropping the comments and messages and thanking me. So it is it's very nice. It's very good. Puts a smile on my diet. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, but, <laughs> um, is that what, what words do you have for those out there that, um, you know, are, are disabled, for example, uh, that are needing, you know, kind of advice right now? What would you say to them? And if they're a bit like upset, you know what? Uh, oh, yeah, there is, there's pages out there. So on um, Facebook, it's called Lucky Thin Project, and there's, yeah, pages out there that help. People like obviously there's myself, but I can't help the world. But there's pages that are there for uh, people with disabilities, and you know, they're, they're there to help, they're there to encourage and uplift. And they used to have actually um, like little events, and everyone would come together and you know, share their talents, and it's like a big picnic. It was very, really, it was cool. But you know, I say, you know, don't, don't beat yourself up, you know, look for, look for help. Look for encouragement. Yeah, don't bottle all, bottle your feelings and be like, oh, my God, I can't do this, I can't do that. Whatever you can do, you know I mean? You can do it. Shut the fuck up and do it. <laughs> yeah. Hey, get out there. Find a way to do it like I did. Yeah, you know? It's good. And I've got Ruby saying, 
There's also the fashion range we need to contract. Laugh out loud. There you go. Oh, yeah. Shame. <laughs> Shame, darling. It was like, well, wait, there, there's a fashion range. Oh, is it hers? We need to come. Oh, we need to come. Yeah, thank you, Brad. Yeah, yeah, Cheers to the freaking weekend. Cheers to the weekend. The can also manage myself and look, look after. Their, their music duo, husband and wife. Yeah, there's a there's a recording studio there, and I think um, we're watching on as well. Where are they? Where are they located? Catch a music. They're in Rye, West Rye. Oh, wow. Mm. Ruby Rose Management. Love it. It's hot. What a hot name. <laughs> and Ruby is basically a dog. Oh, <laughs> yo. There's many dogs named Bonnie too. Like little bonbons. <laughs> Scott and Brendan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, as well. Um, so, is there anything you'd like to, um, you know, like to, you know, let, let um, any of our audience out there know something about you that many people may not not even know, like myself? Is there anything that Bonnie? <laughs> yeah, Bonnie, let's look up. Don't tell them Bonnie died. No, um, <laughs> look. Like, <laughs> a lovely, like, lovely, honest, loyal person. Um, you can reach out, and you know, don't be afraid to talk to me if you if you need help. You know, I'm here always. Um, I'm sure there's many people out there that are willing to help, but um, yeah, don't be afraid to drop a was it? And yeah, there's I'm um, I'm pretty boring. No, like I don't have any crazy stories. You kind of keep that a secret. No, <laughs> no, but yeah, no. <laughs> And I'm good. Um, Baby, sorry, what's your passion outside of everything that you do? What What are you passionate about? Mm, passionate? Yeah, yeah, like health. Health. Mm. Passion about health, you know, um, never letting myself go, to be honest. That's what I, like, I've, I have my, you know, treats here and then, but it's just health, you know, keeping youth, keeping yeah, healthy, fit, training, inspiring everyone, and music. 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 Yeah, music is amazing for the heart. So that's good. That's, someone just said, thanks for your beautiful energy tonight. You put a smile on my face. And it's from Dan. There you go. Oh, that's awesome. It's so good. Yeah. Look, I, I cannot wait for the world to see you on retreat, the film, when you look amazing and hot and, you know, you defy in the I'm just, I want to see it. Hey, I'm even. I just wanted to see what I look like with the fight. I'm pumped. And uh, Kat says, "Congrats on all your achievements and many journeys for your journey." That's Kat, as in from Catcher. Uh, yeah. Awesome. Smelling. Oh, your passion, apparently, your brother. Is it your brother? Her passion is smelling yeah. feet. <laughs> Maggie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, put me on the foot fetish coat. Like, oh, yeah, I've had some, I've had some sneaky, like, you know, comments like, oh, send us some foot pics. Like, who? <laughs> Pro. Yeah. I've seen, I've been sent some messages, man. It was so funny. Like, <laughs> that's You're another so story. You deserve your own show. Honestly, on this character, um, I want to say thank you so much for joining me tonight so we can record this. You are my inspiration too, babe. Uh, I cannot wait to take you out to town on the Oxford Street, you know. Oh. <laughs> you I have? can't once. If, if it happens, if it opens next year, who knows? Look, we can only just pray and hope we need to go out. We, even the retreat gang need to go out hard. We need to get together. A wrap get down. <laughs> You're absolutely awesome. I love you. Yo, look at me, baby heart. I'll try and look at it. It's so cute. Look at it. It's little, little, oh, but it's baby. I love it. <laughs> Love you, baby. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you everyone. And all, all your fans Thank out there you. and everyone that watched tonight as well. Thank you.
Thank you, guys. Thank you. Bye.